Hey, Edith. Hey, Christy. Why do trees hate riddles? I don't know. Because it's too easy to get stumped? Oh, no. Why did the tree get stumped? I don't know. It couldn't get to the root of the problem. Oh, no. <laughs> What's a tree's favorite drink? I don't know. Root beer. Oh, of course it is. Why don't you ever see elephants hiding in trees? I don't know. Because they're really good at it. Oh, I get it. <laughs> it's funny because it's not true. <laughs> I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners in Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening is becoming very popular. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips, a fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down. Christy over there. Hi, Edith over there. How are you? Hey, I'm good. We got a bunch of snow today. It was so lovely. I loved it ever so much. It was oh, about a foot. Oh, I think so. Oh, it was great. It was, it was a so big great. surprise this morning to wake up to because they were saying on the news two to four inches and then uh -huh. you wake up and whoop. I'm, I love when they're wrong like that. And it was beautiful. The sun was out and oh. all that snow is going to melt. Yep. And it's going to be make all our garden so happy. You know, one of the reasons I love to shovel my driveway is... I move a lot of it right onto my lawn where the trees are. Mm. So it's a little extra work, but, you know, I don't know what they say, an uh, inch of snow, but an inch of snow is quite a bit of water. A f yes. Right? A foot of snow is quite a bit of water. And a foot of snow is 12 times as much as an inch. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct a <-rama. laughs> Hey, I have a, um, a Latvian update for you. I love the Latvians. What's the update? Well, last week you were wanting to know if we'd had any more Latvian listeners. Yes. And um, I first I have some sad news. Uh oh. Which is that we haven't had a we've had two listens from Latvia. Yeah. And we haven't had a Latvian listener in many many months. Oh my God, no! So we might have lost our Latvian listener. Oh darn it! <laughs> However, oh. we are up to. 35 countries who have listened to Upside Down Tulips. Yeah, that's just, that's just, fun. that's just amazing to And me. so now we have a listener from Cyprus. Wow. So that was a new one. Sitting here in your basement, six feet from each other, and people all over the world are hear hearing it. That's yeah. just amazing. And yet still no Nebraska. And that's just weird. We're in 49 states. You know, those corn huskers are just very stubborn people. I don't know why they don't. They are Taurus though. and Scorpios. That's oh, the thing. Is that what it is? <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, we get to, we, every week we're going to uh, celebrate some members of our garden party and for folks who are supporting Upside Down Tulips uh, at the dead header level, which is $10 a month or more. We, we say their name. On our podcast. And we say it out loud. We say we it out do, loud. We don't say it like under our breath. Like I Say it loud and proud. This yep. week, we're going to celebrate who, Edith? We're going to celebrate my sister, Uta. Thanks, Uta, for being a deadheader. So appreciative. And of course, you know, there's lots of different levels people can be supportive of Upside Down Tulips. You don't have to spend 10 bucks a month. Nope. Your sister's very generous. But yep. you can, for 5 bucks a month, you can be a... Uh, Lawn chair lettuce. Yes. For two bucks a month, you can be a curmudgeon. Two bucks a month, $24 a year. You can drive by Christie's house and throw change. You throw <laughs> more right. than two bucks a month. Right. <laughs> right. Hey, I found 55 cents in the alley yesterday. Hey. So I'm, maybe we should have a whole new little category for yes. change throwers. Change, yes. Just throw change at us. Well, we appreciate support on, on any level. It really it helps us continue to do the podcast, and we love doing it for you folks. So... If you want to consider being a member of our fun garden party and get fun rewards, don't forget that. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to feeling good about yourself, yeah, you feel good not about being yourself. a slacker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is it like on public radio when you listen and you and you're not a member of public radio and you have that little like just that little thing in your like oh maybe I just shouldn't listen for a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you just you forget that they don't know that you're listening. And you haven't given any money. Right. Yeah, I'm they really don't. not, know. you know, I'm Well, maybe they, what if they do? Maybe they do. Uh-oh. 
Maybe, maybe we know, maybe, maybe Christy and I know right now, if you're listening Mm -hmm. and you haven't even thrown any change at us. Right? There you go. Well, and you also can get some fun merch from us when you sign up for the garden party. You can get mugs and t-shirts and totes and all that stuff's on our website too. So just check out our website. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anything else before we get into garden update? Edith. Um, well, you know, we're, today we're talking about trees, and next week we're talking about house plants. That's going to be good. Yeah. Next week the snow should be gone. Pretty soon we can actually get right back out into our gardens. Yeah, I was hoping to get out there this week. So was I. I had great plans, mm-hmm. but when the weather was in the 50s, I was super busy, and so I was thinking, well, f- tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to get out there, it's going to be in the 50s. Mm-hmm. Well, that's going to take a while for a foot of snow to melt. Yeah, it will. So I'm not, I don't have to figure out something else to do tomorrow that's going to be a whole new plan i did want to tell you about somewhat of a garden update is did you see there was a coyote spotting in our neighborhood no so folks we live three blocks away from each other and there was there have been coyote spottings we should probably tell them we live i think like three miles from downtown denver yeah it's not like we're way out in the suburbs at all yeah during the pandemic it's been a 10 minute drive to downtown denver so you a coyote like yeah. right here. Yes. Wow. In our neighborhood. No, I didn't know so. that. So Wow. Yeah, that's very disturbing. And I have a garden musing. Okay. Well, last week we talked about soil. Yes, we did. And the difference between live soil and dead soil. Which is dirt. Which is dirt. And that soil is alive and is filled with living organisms and bacteria and organic matter. Mm-hmm. One tablespoon of soil has more organisms in it than there are people on Earth. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Well, Mm -hmm. here's an interesting study that was done by Christopher Lowry, who is an associate professor at the Department of Integrative Physiology and Center for Neuroscience at the University of Colorado Boulder. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was a study about bacterium in soil that is a natural antidepressant. Have you heard this? Really? This bacterium is called Microbacterium vacae, and it's found to mirror the effects on neurons that drugs like Prozac provide. They trigger the release of serotonin, which in turn, of course, improves your mood Uh and makes you relaxed and happy. Touching and feeling soil. Well, for heaven's sakes, worms should be ecstatic all the time. Maybe they are. Maybe they are. That's Maybe right. they're always having a party. But I think that makes sense on why sometimes I don't like to have gloves on. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, there's nothing. I think people would agree with that. The, the, the touch of soil is actually, it is. It's therapeutic. I didn't know there was like a reason for that. Isn't that interesting? That's so interesting. That it triggers the serotonin in you. Just the same feeling you get like when you exercise really hard or. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. So I can't wait to get my fingers out in the soil. Yeah, well, I I have a musing. It's actually a musing from Mae West. And you remember Mae West? Yes. And she says... Uh, She was the great vaudevillian comedian with W.C. Fields. Yep. And she says, you know, March isn't the only thing that comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb. Christy's looking at me like she has no idea what I'm talking about. (laughs) Well, I'm thinking it's dirty because it's Mae West. Well, of course it's dirty. Oh, okay. (laughs) say anything but it's funny okay it's like dirty clean clean oh dirty. yes yes it's clean dirty yeah. yes good garden music and that's what's happening in your garden this week that's, that's right it. that's it that's right boy it's next week will be more interesting when the snow melts and we're getting to get out there and start cleaning because i got i'm gonna start cleaning up my garden too well um i'm gonna be i'm gonna you know they say you should wait until it's like five days in a row of 50 degrees next week Is that going to be next week? Yes. And the reason for that is if you don't wait, uh, you end up killing, you take away the shelter of Mm -hmm. larvae. uh, Ladybugs. Ladybugs. Think bees that have sheltered Mm -hmm. in your garden. If if you do it too soon, you you kill them. And there could be, if there's another frost and you're cleaning up perennial flowers, you could uh, be, the the little new leaves could be vulnerable. Yeah. Oh, that's Just good. Because the old mm-hmm. the old plant is protecting it. Mm-hmm. And you could also be mushing down the soil because if it's all wet. 
Yeah, that's right. So we that's have right. to wait. So we do have to wait. Uh huh. Folks, if you hear uh, words or terms you're not familiar with or you want a good laugh, check out the Upside Down Dictionary on our website. And if you want to see pictures of our gardens, inspirations, gardening jokes, please visit us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. We have blogs that are kind of fun. We have all the things. <laughs> <laughs> On the road again. So great to finally be on a road trip. Philadelphia, here we come. I'm hungry, Christy. Where should we stop to eat? Hey, how about a swing through good old New Jersey and get some diner food? Perfect. I used to live in New Jersey, and I love disco fries. And I went to Rutgers. Let's get a fat sandwich. Go Scarlet Knights. We just take the next exit and the second jug handle. Edith, do you know why New Jersey is called the Garden State? Is it named after the Zach Braff romantic comedy? <laughs> no, no. In 1876, Abraham Browning, a prominent New Jersey politician, referred to New Jersey as the Garden State during a speech where he compared New Jersey to an immense barrel filled with good things to eat. I like my answer better. This traffic is terrible. Hold on tight. Gonna have to make a Jersey slide to make the exit. Ah! Ooh, that was a close one. Welcome to New Jersey, the Garden State. Hey, what's going on? What happened to the radio? The sky is changing color. Where are we? This doesn't look like New Jersey. I feel different. What the heck? The car is floating. We're above the trees. You have now entered the Garden State. Did you just hear that voice from the car radio? I have a strange desire to plant something I don't like, just to see if I can grow it. I want to gather banana peels, coffee grounds, and eggshells, and make a compost pile. Nothing would make me happier right now than to pull weeds. Worms! I want worms! What is happening to us? I have a feeling we are not in New Jersey anymore, Christy. The Garden State is the state of mind for gardeners. When you are gardening, you feel the life all around you. The warmth of the sun, the soil in your hands. Your brain produces endorphins, leaves you feeling happy. I love the garden state. Let's never leave. Agreed. But what about lunch? Forget about it. Find your garden state by listening to Upside Down Tulips, the fun podcast about gardening gone wrong. Here we are. Look at me, I'm talking. <laughs> yes, you are. You We're are talking, just knocking are. it out of the park, Edith. I just started talking because I felt so guilty. So, you know, we're talking about trees. Yeah. So, Christy, I did a little looking stuff up about the value of trees to a community. I have, to, I have some figures, some... Okay, for example, Uh if you plant a tree today on the west side of your home, in five years, your energy bills should be 3% less. Get out. In 15 years, the savings will be nearly 12%. Do you see that? Because the sun goes down, the heat, it shades. It's on the west side of your house. That is so cool. That makes perfect sense. Having large trees in yards along streets increases a home's value from 3 to 15%. Now, this is a biggie. One acre of forest absorbs six tons of carbon dioxide and puts out four tons of oxygen. This is enough to meet the annual needs of 18 people. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Trees properly placed around buildings can reduce air conditioning needs by 30% and can save 20 to 50% in energy used for heating. Because, you know, the wind breaks. That makes so much sense. Right? It makes so much sense. Healthy, mature trees add an average of 10% to a property's value. You know how people complain, and I don't blame you, it's so expensive to have trees professionally pruned or taken down, but don't forget, it adds an average of 10% to your property's value. You know how awful it looks with a a house with not a tree around it? Yeah, it's a great investment. Mm -hmm. The planting of trees means improved water quality, resulting in less runoff and erosion. This allows more recharging of the groundwater supply. 
wooded areas help prevent the transport of sediment and chemicals into streams. So, I mean, now we're talking about uh-huh. the huge, bigger, bigger picture. Now, oh, listen to this. Oh, no, let me do this one first. Mm-hmm. Trees are considered the lungs of the planet because they provide the same amount of oxygen which nearly all of the inhabitants on Earth need to breathe. A tree can provide a daily supply of oxygen for four people. Wow. And finally, in laboratory research, visual exposure to settings with trees has produced significant recovery from stress within five minutes, as indicated by changes in blood pressure and muscle tension. I totally believe that. So sit under a tree, put your hands in the yeah. soil. Exactly what I was thinking and too. We, yes, and then you're going to be so happy. You know, no other organism on earth lives as long as a tree. There are trees, aren't there, that are like a thousand years old? Oh. More? There are. There is an aspen grove in Utah, Edith, that is 80,000 years old. What? Really? And trees have only been around for the last 10% of Earth's history, though. There are 422 times more trees than there are people on the planet. Oh, that's really good. That's really good to hear. You know what? That's good to hear. That uh, trees in a forest can talk and share nutrients through an underground internet built by soil fungi. I have been hearing about things about this that the trees actually can, they know when another tree is in trouble, they will yes. help it. They, we, there's so much that we don't know. You know, we, we just don't know. The animals and the plants mm-hmm. around us, so much more complicated than we thought. It is magical. The last one I have is that some trees emit chemicals that attract enemies of their enemies. Oh, my. Oh, that is so clever. That is the enemy so of my enemy is so my friend. If, so if there's a bird that bugs them, they'll bring in something that uh, to emit a chemical to bring something in that t- gets rid of the bird. Or or if a bug is in their uh-huh. way, they'll bring in something. Oh, that's great. That's so fascinating. You know what I've never understood is people who people who make fun of people that like trees by calling them tree huggers. Yeah. I don't get that at all. You know, I mean... It's, I don't know. We don't do that to other things. You know, we, we uh-huh. think it's fine to be a cat lover, a dog lover. That's all just fine. But, you know, tree huggers come to be this pejorative, which I don't understand at all. Yeah, we need to take the word back. Yeah, it's like calling soldiers people killers. They are, but we don't go around <laughs> calling them that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's harsh, I know. <laughs> okay. Well, should we talk about what trees we have in our little backyards? Yes, yes, we should. I'm going to, uh, should I start? Yeah, you okay. please start. Well, I thought I would start with a controversial tree in my yard. Oh, I, I have, know what you're going to say. I have two clumps of lanthus trees, which are also called tree of heaven. Also called sumac. Also called sumac. Also called tree of hell. Uh-huh. Because to some people, it's considered an invasive species. It was brought over uh, from the Philippines and China. I believe in the 1800s, it can spread very quickly. Well, that's the thing. Take it spreads over. under the ground. Yeah. You know, like a, a, a pine tree isn't going to send out a shoot and grow mm-hmm. another pine tree. Yeah. But those trees. and Like I'm, aspen. aspen like, exactly like aspen. But for some reason, aspen, I've had both aspen and sumac. And my neighbor has sumac, which means I have sumac, which mm-hmm. means I spent the summer because I don't have a lawn and I don't mow. Mm-hmm. Pulling them out. Yes, that they're they really are invasive, and they have a smell that some people find I, disagreeable. Oh, I love the smell. Personally. Oh, oh I interesting love the smell. And if you chop it off, it grows back right away. It grows back they're right away. Hard to get rid of, and they go feet under the ground. Yeah. I mean, I used to dig them up, but Christy, I have to say, yours is beautiful. If you take care of a, mm-hmm. a tree, is better than no tree. That's what I opinion. figure. It's a tree. I figure it's the tree that I have, and it's also these two clumps uh, provide great shade. For my house and for my yard uh-huh. and for my garden, and if it's either that or no tree, yep, I'd rather have that. Um, and I try to take care of them the best I can. They grow very fast. So one clump I have is really tall. Yeah, I and mean, it must be like forty feet tall that clump. Yeah. Don't and you it's think beautiful. It is? I have to say it's really beautiful. Well, you know, one thing reasons why I also love them is that if you ever re- read the book 
A tree grows in Brooklyn. Uh huh. Yeah, that's the tree. A Is tree that of heaven. the tree? I didn't because know Because that, that tree can grow in a crack in a sidewalk. And it can take the whole sidewalk with it. it it's true, but still it gives a tree. entire sidewalk. And then I also love it because it's, do you ever remember the Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale called The Nightingale? Vaguely. And um, it's about an emperor in China who loves the sound of a nightingale. And so he's brought to where the nightingale is. And the nightingale lives in the tree of heaven, a Chinese tree of heaven. Oh. And then, of course, he gets a mechanical nightingale because he thinks that's going to be better and that falls apart and breaks and when the emperor is very sick he wants to hear the song of a nightingale because it makes him so happy so then the nightingale flies all the way to him to sing to him and death is so moved that death allows the emperor to live oh that's a nice story Meanwhile, the tree of heaven, you know, is uprooting my garage. Sorry. <laughs> oh. No, just, let's just tell yeah. our listeners, if don't let it grow too close to your house because it mm-hmm. literally will. It literally moved the cement from the side of my garage, the side mm-hmm. that I don't see. Oh. So I let it grow. I didn't I see it. I believe that. And it, it ruined it. So be really mm-hmm. careful with it. I've that. seen it grow through fences. Yep. 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 Me too. Like a chain link fence is going mm-hmm. right through it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what about some of the trees you have in your yard? Well, let's let's talk about my fruit trees. Yeah. Okay, because my fruit trees are the trees that mean a lot to me. I have an apple in the front. Um, and you know, the apples are always wormy, but going on the proposition of an apple is better than no apple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why, Christy, but it's always full of birds. Maybe that's what it is. They always mm. get really wormy. And of course, I mm. don't use pesticides. Yeah. In the back, however, I have a plum tree and a pear tree. No, a peach tree and a plum tree. They never get wormy. They literally never get wormy. Wow. And I don't know why. And they're they're amazing. They provide shade. I planted the one so when I look out my kitchen window looking to the west, it blocks the setting sun. So you know what I mean? Mm. And and every time I look out the window I can see a tree which makes me happy. Yes. I have one kind of fruit tree. I planted a Canada red choke cherry tree that's in the front. And it it's a great tree because the leaves, when they first come out, are green. But then they turn a burgundy red all summer long. And they have beautiful white flowers in the spring. And I thought this would be great. I'll have choke cherry because I could make choke cherry jam. Yeah. So like a like a bitter sweet tart jam, which would be so good. Yeah. The first year I had it, and it bloomed beautifully, and I had all these choke cherries on it. And then a round of robins, about twenty robins, came one afternoon and ate every single choke cherry on that tree. Oh. So now I have a bird feeder. Okay, all right. <laughs> and I don't mind because it makes the, the robins so happy. I used to have a uh, sour cherry tree, and the same thing. The birds got it. They would All of them would come at the same time and eat everything off of that. <laughs> Again, that was fine. Yeah. Yeah. And I have my Rocky Mountain maple that I have in the backyard, which I have lamented about in the past, which uh, is always supposed to turn a beautiful orange and red in the fall and it never does and i think it's because we've just had the weather has just been so kooky yeah that it freezes and then in the spring the squirrels will start to they will eat the new shoots they'll be up in that tree and they will nibble 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 and i'll just see the ground covered okay what are they nibbling are they nibbling the the bark the new shoots of the leaves the, the leaves. And the bark, like the new little, the, the stems. Something is, something is, is eating the on, on my apple tree in the front. And I think it, it has to be squirrels. Those evil, evil yeah. squirrels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Squirrels. <laughs> and now let's flow into Downward Dog. Oof. I can't believe I got talked into taking this stupid yoga class. And up to burning thighs from hell. Ugh, ugh, I feel so stupid. And now into bad day to forget deodorant. Ugh, ugh, ugh. This stuff is a lot harder than it looks. And now flow into call an ambulance. What? How is that even physically possible? Um, 
And just hold there. Breathe into the stretch. Breathe. Goats? You gotta be kidding me. Breathe. I don't think I can take much more of this. Get away from me. Breathe. And finally, allow yourself to enter the garden state. Uh, like New Jersey or a romantic comedy by Zach Braff? Oh, brother. Whoa. Something strange is happening. I see green all around me. I smell something wonderful. Is that... Could it be... Manure? I feel lighter. Relaxed. I don't care what I look like. Or if my butt crack is on full display to awe. I want dirt in my fingernails. I want uneven tan lines. I want to plant and harvest and weed and compost and dig and... I want to grow something! And to wrap up our class, let's all move into the thank God it's over position. My name is Tammy, and thank you for attending today's class. Namaste. No, Tammy, don't make me leave the Garden State. I love the Garden State. Please take me back. Why, you can go to the Garden State anytime you like. You always have the power. You've had it all along. The nice thing about the Garden State is that it is right out your back door. Just get some seeds and sow them into the ground. Or get a little plant and pop it into some soil. Water it, nurture it, enjoy it, eat it, or smoke it. No judgment. A flower does not worry what the flower next to it thinks. It just blooms. So I can wear sweatpants instead of yoga pants? Yup. And you will feel that good kind of sore the very next day. But you will have tomatoes to show for it. I'm off to trade my yoga mat and blocks for garden clogs and a goofy sun hat. Huh. Another student lost to gardening. I gotta stop doing that pose. Oh well. The flower that blooms in adversity is the most rare and beautiful of all. Time to water the garden while I listen to Upside Down Tulips. And of course, we both at one time had black walnut trees. Which is a beautiful, beautiful tree. Yeah. I loved mine. The squirrels loved it. Mm -hmm. And a, a, was it a fungus that came through I our community? I think that's what it was. I think and it is. All the black walnuts, I think pretty much in this side of the mountains. I think so. Are all are gone. gone. And it was one of those things, Christy, I literally, you, there's a comic in the paper where a squirrel eats a nut and then throws it on a person's head. <laughs> I think it's called non sequitur. Oh. I, my squirrels used to do that. They yes. would eat the nuts, and then it would rain down from the tree. Yep. I had to stop using my clothesline. <laughs> Is that why you my sheets would get all dirty oh. from the squirrels. And also, the, the other reason people weren't crazy about black walnuts is they used to drip something. And there's also, I think, there was something in the root system that would prevent some things from growing. Yeah. And I, I, we, I remember the story fondly, Edith, because I think this is when we, I first started to know you and know you were my neighbor. And I don't know if we were playing poker at the time or not, but we both realized our trees were dying slash mm -hmm. dead. And we went in together with, to a local company to take our trees down. Yeah. And boy, it was an arm and a leg to take them down. Yeah. But he gave us a deal because we live so close to each other and they could get it done right. in one Swoop. And I have to say, that was a sad day for me. That was a yeah. really sad day. See that beautiful tree. It changes. It changed everything. Changed everything. Yeah. That's why I planted the Rocky Mountain maple. Mm -hmm. Still not the same, though. Mm -hmm. And uh, interestingly, on the other side of my fence, my neighbor also has a bunch of sumacs. And because that black walnut is gone, they've taken over. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. Wow. Uh, but planting trees are fun. Planting trees, you know what they say. A million dollar hole for a ten dollar plant. Yep, you have to dig it wide, big, wide, wide, very wide. And uh, what I do is I put compost on the bottom. No, interesting. Yeah, oh, always, always put. Oh, compost let's on talk the about bottom. this. I have. Okay. I'll suggest something different. I put compost on the bottom, and then I put a little bit of Epsom salts. Like I put Epsom salts in everything I ever plant. Uh, and then I put the tree in. And then I put the dirt 
soil, soil back Very good. on top. So you don't compost when you when you do that. Oh, and I water. I'm sorry. Yes. I water first and I water twice. Water, mm -hmm. fill up the hole with water, let it go away. Yeah, that's good. I've seen that. Yep. So that it's nice and wet when it goes mm -hmm. in and, and then moist. water. And moist <laughs> and humid. And then I water once it's once I put it in the ground. Yeah, I, I've heard an interesting aspect about not improving the soil when you put in a tree or a shrubbery because you're otherwise the tree or the shrubbery is just going to be happy and it's an improved soil and it's not going to go out into the soil, especially if you have, like I have, and probably you have, crappy clay soil. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's harsh treatment, but it's sort of forcing the tree to send its roots out beyond mm -hmm. the comfy zone and thwarting its desires because there's nothing better down <laughs> deeper down <laughs> no i do i do do that and i think another thing mm -hmm. that people will often make a mistake is that they will bury it too deep yes and you have to know where the the trunk flare is and as soon as the trunk starts to flare out a little bit that mm -hmm. needs at that needs to be above ground. It, the crown. You, let's call it the, yeah. the little bit of a crown. It's not like a tomato you can put way down in the ground. No, that one, it needs to have that breathing wound. It needs to be visible. It needs visible. to be up. Yeah. yeah. And I think people will also make the mistake of mulching. Well, I mulch, but not right up to the bar. Oh, definitely not right up to it. you got to give yeah. it at least five if you're going to do yeah. it. Though I would argue that depending upon, well, you don't have grass. I don't, no. So, but when you think about when you're out in the forest, though, there's not... You know, trees just kind of exist like that. The trees, why well, do you want to make sure that it has room? So if you if you do mulch, make sure you have give a good five inches mm -hmm. away yeah. from the yeah. base of the tree when you do that. And of course, um, keep an eye on the water situation. But you can also overwater. Yeah, you can. You so, have to be, yeah, that's mm -hmm. so hard. You have to like underwater, overwater. But if you have clay clay soil, or if you have a really active um, irrigation system and if you have a lawn mm -hmm. i would be careful though here in colorado we usually have the opposite problem it's so hot and dry here we it's i would not easy to overwater here honestly yeah. if it's outside sometimes i'll just take a yeah. hose and just put it right by the tree at a nice slow drip hmm. in the winter i'll do mm, that yeah when it's nice out i throw snow at it <laughs> like i did today <laughs> no but i will i stand by my my putting some uh compost in the bottom of the hole i really do I Interesting. Just, I, just I love it when we disagree. Are, yeah, I don't think the roots are going to lay around like a bunch of slackers on a couch going, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. I do think <laughs> they, the tree wants to grow. It can't grow if the roots don't move. Well, that's a really good point. I, I heard this great phrase that trees have a tendency toward immortality. Aha, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And that... And they reach I, for the heavens. Yeah. And they reach down into the ground toward the, the magma of the earth. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it would be, sometimes people get intimidated by a tree, but when you think about it, it's not that hard to plant a tree. Oh, it is not that hard at all to plant a tree. Uh, I the, the biggest mistake I've made with trees is planting them too close together. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to. I had a, a pear tree in the front next to the apple, which was next to the pine tree, which was next to the black oak. And Oh, dear. I have a small front yard, and I ended up having to take the pear tree away. It just it was just puny and sad mm -hmm. looking, and uh, I had to take it down. And also, you can tell, you can tell a tree can literally feel in the air. It doesn't have to be touched by another tree to feel it. And I have proof of that because my apple tree is growing into the pine, and the pine has stopped growing on that side. That's right. I've seen yeah, that. Yeah, you've seen that. Yes. It's, they give each other room. Yeah, that's interesting. Isn't it? Yeah. So I made the mistake of planting those two too close together as well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the pine was, I think, like a six-inch little thing when I got it yeah. from the Arbor Society. It's hard to use your imagination sometimes when they when you're at a place and they say, this tree will get to be this big. Yeah. They try to really figure out how big is it going to get and how uh -huh. much room it needs. and you can, I can think height, but I can never think the width. They get so big. Like yeah. with aspen. Yeah. Now, some aspen, I had aspen right up to my house, right up to the house. It was there when I moved in, and they died two years ago. And I talked to an arborist, and he said, in the city, 
Aspen only live about 20 years. I've heard that. And that's a, like on cue, mine kind of wilted away. And that also that Aspen like a higher altitude. So here in the Denver metro area, we're yes. at 5,280 feet. They were feet. not meant to grow here. But Aspen, Colorado is at 9,000 feet. Yeah. And I bet you they're working really hard to do some uh, a hybrid Aspen tree that'll grow at lower because oh, you can all over Denver, you see people oh. wanting to grow aspen. And you see them. I see people planting yeah. them, and I and, and I sort of feel like to me, it's their journey with like my journey with hydrangea. Yeah, you know, I just kept <laughs> yes. planting hydrangea, again, thinking it yeah. has to make yep. it work, and threw a lot of money at it. And then I see you see you'll see some nice aspen around here, yeah. but then you just know that after a while they're gonna yeah they're not gonna yeah. make it. They're not going to live to be 80,000 years old like the one in Utah. No, not no, going to happen. Not. Okay, so we talk about shrubbery? Shrubbery, yes, shrubbery. You talk because I am not big on the shrubbery. I was interesting that I discovered I have a lot of shrubs. Oh, yeah? I have lilac. Oh, I have that. I don't like it. <laughs> okay. <Yes. laughs> I haven't taken care of it well, so it looks terrible. I have bridal veil spirea. Uh-huh. And I have um, barberry. And um, do you have a forsythia? The not yet. The That's what I want to get. Spring, yeah. I want to get that. Mm-hmm. I have a holly. Oh yes, I know you have a holly. Pretty. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I think some of the mistakes I've made with shrubs before is pruning them at the wrong time. Now that's a really good point. And the, the same goes for trees. Right? Same goes for trees. Yes, especially if they bloom, you want to prune summer blooming trees and shrubs in winter or early spring before new growth appears, but a lilac sets its buds in the year before. So if right now it's February and if folks go out and start trimming back their lilac bushes, you're going to lose a whole year's worth of blooms. Yeah. So you have to wait for lilacs. You have to wait till after they bloom. For spirea, wait until after they bloom. Um, I've done that mistake. I've I've done that mistake with my barberry too, is it has a really nice really pretty pink flower and I've lost a lot of blooms on it and you can prune pretty strong oh and can I say one thing about holly bushes did you say you had a holly bush no well my holly bush never has red berries on it and it'll be for and if you are the same boat as me it'll be for one or two reasons it's either one you have a male holly bush no kidding or two you have a female holly bush with no male bush nearby. Or I don't have a holly bush, which is what the truth is. <laughs> right. <laughs> but if you if you can have a female holly bush, and if there's just somebody in the neighborhood has yeah. a male holly yeah. bush, it, it doesn't have to be right on your property, just somewhere in the vicinity yeah. that can help pollinate your holly bush. Oh, no kidding. So and I then you get red. And then you'll get those red berries. But I oh. don't... And that'll suck it. Mine'll suck her. Huh. This year, I'm going to have to do a major prune back of my bridal veil spirea. Okay. It has gotten huge. It's It's got to be like eight feet. I've got like three of them that are eight feet tall. It's going to be a, if we get a good spring, it's going to be a stunning display of flowers oh, it's this gonna be year. pretty, yeah. It all depends on, it all depends on what May does in April. Mm-hmm. If we get a hard freeze, there go your peach blossoms again. Oh, please no. Oh, There yeah. go... There go the lilacs and yeah. um, the spirea. I don't think I could take it two years in a row. I just don't think I could. Yeah. Yeah. There go the crab apple blossoms. Yeah. So we just got to keep our fingers crossed. A little cold is okay, but not below 30. Mm-mm. Well, here's something we forgot to say, too, what? about trees, which is that when to plant them. Like, you know, when they go on sale is when not to plant them. They will go on sale in the heat of the summer here. Oh. You don't want to, you don't want to plant. Yeah. Fall, Fall is, is actually great. the best time to plant the tree. Yeah. I just thought I really should say good. that. And spring too. And that's true for shrubs too, though. It's true there for both go. of them. What about suckers on a tree? I always take them off. Yeah, I do too. Right? Okay, because we hadn't mentioned that. Yeah. And there's some kind of, there's some kind of thing I think you can actually put on a tree, like sucker be gone or something like that. And I don't know if the if that's a natural element or not. I just don't think it's that really hard to just, like, trim them off. It's so easy to trim. Yeah. Usually when they're little, you can just take them off with your hand. Yeah, yeah my choke my choke cherry will get will get suckers okay. on it. So, okay. And I would say that, you know, you can, when you do trim, when you trim a tree, you 
as it grows, you can start trimming out the lower branches mm-hmm. or any branches that are crossing yes. each other. Or... Don't don't let the branches touch each other. That's it. Uh-huh. Yes, exactly. And don't trim off the top. Yeah. Don't top it off. And if it's really tall, then just hire somebody. Please do because it's safer. Yeah. I'll go in there a little bit and do some trimming when they're really tall. It's 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 interesting that you said don't trim the top off of them. There's one. You'll see when we uh, read this letter, there's one tree that it is recommended that you top off. Mm. We'll talk about that in a minute. Oh, that is interesting. Isn't that interesting? And now it's... What time is it, Christy? <laughs> Edith, could what? it possibly be mailbag? Oh, I hope so. Ring, ring. This is a letter from one of our favorite listeners, Doug from Tennessee. Our Alex Trebek. This is what he says. I just heard on this week's edition of Upside Down Tulips that next week you'll be doing an episode about trees. I thought you might be interested in talking about pawpaws, the only native North American fruit tree. They have a custardly consistency and can be used as a substitute in any recipe that calls for bananas. Hmm. Pawpaws range as far as East Kansas, Southern Michigan, most of Alabama, and Southern Pennsylvania. They can grow up to 35 feet tall, although growers usually prune them to a maximum of 15 feet. Otherwise, you can wave fondly at their fruit growing at the top of the tree and have no chance of harvesting them. See? Topping it off. Yeah. Supposedly, it takes seven to eight years from seedling to fruiting for new trees, but ours produce fruit in four to five years. Just be patient, gardeners. Yeah. You could have fruit. Pawpaws are almost never sold commercially since they ripen to the point of fermentation soon after they're picked. Their fruit can be kept only two to three days at room temperature or about a week if refrigerated. You can buy bare root pawpaw seedlings from Burpee. I've also found them at a local native plant nursery here in Tennessee, and I would expect they'd be available in similar nurseries widely in their range. They're supposed to be easy to grow from seed, but I'm just trying to germinate some this year for the first time. Interestingly, pawpaws are like apples in that they don't grow true to type. Each individual seed in a fruit is genetically different from the others and from its parent tree. So growing them from seed may be something of a crapshoot. That's so interesting. Wow. Just for fun, you might like to know that the third Thursday in September has been designated as National Pawpaw Day by the National Day Calendar, and the pawpaw was designated as Ohio State Native Fruit in 2009. I really want a pawpaw now. I've never tasted a pawpaw. I have never tasted a pawpaw. You know, I looked up recipes for pawpaws. Yes. And the most interesting one had three ingredients. It was a Chinese recipe. Uh It was pawpaw, sugar, and white fungus. And it said, like, <laughs> go buy some white fungus. Well, I've never get... seen white fungus. Yeah. Unless they mean a mushroom, but that and what was And what right. was it when you had the sugar and the white fungus? What, what did it, you it get? It was like a pawpaw dessert. Okay. <laughs> it's like a pawpaw dessert, I guess. Yeah, you know, I think my paw might like that. Your who? My paw. Her my, paw? My paw might like a pawpaw dessert. Oh, for heaven's <laughs> sakes, Christy. <laughs> okay. So if you have any pawpaw stories, gardening stories, successes, flops, would you please write to us? We want to hear all about it. Did you ever plant a tree and it didn't work out? Can you tell us what happened so we can all learn from your mistakes? You can, you can, you can, you know, why don't you write us and ask us about the meaning of life? We don't want to <laughs> limit you. You can write oh, anything. Oh, that's tough. I don't know if I could answer that, Edith. Well, we could try. You'd probably make a pun out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but do write to us, you guys. We love hearing from you. Just write to us at upside down tulips at gmail dot com or at our website, upside down tulips dot com. Yes. And now folks, it's time for the inspiration of the week. Edith. Thank you, Christy. This is from William Blake, a poet from the eighteenth century. And he says The tree which moves some to tears of joy is in the eyes of others only a green thing which stands in the way. As a man is, so he sees. Whoa. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. That that covers everything. As a man is, so he sees. That's going to carry me all week long, Edith. Me too. I I loved that. And, And I love our listeners. 
Me too. Let's thank them. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, garden partiers and listeners. We're glad you're here. We're glad that you join us every week. We are Edith Weiss and Christy Montour Larson. And if you enjoy Upside Down Tulips, please rate, subscribe, and tell a friend or two. Please. Special thanks to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. If you want to hear more of Denise's music, just go to denisegentilini.com or you can find that link on our website. Oh, and a very special thanks to our friend and talented actor, Mare Trevathan. So join us next week for tips and tricks on not killing your houseplants. <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Edith, don't forget. Uh-oh, what? If you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Upside down to this. In like a lion, out like a lamb. That was really funny, Christy. I can't believe you didn't laugh.